those acts so that they would be more likely to give us what we need. I also believe I also believe that some some judges I don't vote for now, like because I really need an investigator. And then they wouldn't let me have an investigator and I, and I think that from the judge's perspective, you're probably thinking oh, that's more money that the county has to spend. But I will tell you it's been my experience when I actually have an investigator, like let's say I, I have a line of cinema client, right? <coughs> And when I send that investigator out, that investigator finds out that my client is lying and sniveling, then my client is much more likely to plead and it will get the case over. That has not been the experience I've gotten. But I haven't had it. You'd be hard pressed. I do not know that I've turned down an ex parte motion for investigator. Okay, all right. Even on retained clients. Um, because I agree with you entirely. Um, I do think that it facilitates working on so I'm going to talk about bonds in a minute. It's all going to be a thing. I like um, One thing I like, I've noticed is like uh, this meaningful talking we're supposed to be having between settings. And, I mean, I'm not going to talk about not returning emails. Like, I remember even as a prosecutor, I'm like, well, just wait till it's on the dock because I can look at the file right in front of me. But y'all aren't in trial on the busy, the busy days. Um, but you're in trial all the other times. And I don't know about your court, but. There's some courts that threes aren't allowed to make racks for eight months, and you can't have a meaningful discussion. I mean, and the chief won't call. It's just, mm -hmm. could there be a day, like, I don't know, was the chief not to be in trial or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're preaching to the choir, I know, because I've been there, like you guys are every day. Mm -hmm. But, then you know, yeah. these are larger issues that DCM and Nothing that I or any of my brethren are going to be able to come up with and fix. Because what you're dealing, you're talking personality issues. And so all I can do from my vantage point is encourage people to do what I'd like them to do, which is have meaningful discussions outside of court. But it just, I, I realize that. Yes. And let me just take a moment and tell you, Melinda Hill will be here tomorrow. So there, I think there's some issues related to the uh, district attorney's office that uh, Kristen or Judge Manning did not speak to, but perhaps Judge Hill could. So there's, I just want to let y'all know that she is a future speaker, and maybe some of these questions are best directed to her. Right, and along those lines, before I forget, uh, it, I mean, anybody who's ever worked at this DA's office or any large governmental organization will tell you that it's not unusual for the right hand in the organization not to know what the left hand is doing. And I will say that we've had that happen a couple of times, or I've seen it personally, that when you bring things to light, or you, you let them know that this is a constant recurring problem, they may not be aware of it. As simplistic and overarching as it is to you, they may not be aware of it. So I encourage you to that talk with one of them tomorrow. Well, I mean, if we get time, I'll make it yeah, Jackie had her hand up first, and then I'll get you. Jackie. The only one of the problems that I have with all of it is, for instance, the main day that you had, the other days, is my understanding, was so the DAs would have time to get the things ready for us to get the files ready, and they would have more office time to do that. Not only do they not return our calls, okay, they don't have the stuff ready, okay, and when you're in trial, and I'm just going to say you as any of them, the DAs show up at 9 o'clock or 5 minutes to 9, and they say, well, no prosecutor, no uh, lawyers were there. I'm there early. I see five, six lawyers. They know you're in trial at 930. So how can you get anything done? So that's your... Is that... Because that is what happens in my court. You're absolutely and, right. And that's consistent with what you're saying in other courts. And my understanding is that the judge can tell the number one prosecutor, I would like everybody here at 830. And I think what Vanessa did, because they weren't coming when she started her trial, she does probable cause. And I wasn't in there that day. And she just dismissed all the cases and they had a prosecutor there the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit drastic, but I mean, for us to, for us to know you're going to trial at 9.30 and we try to get there so we'll have that time to talk to them because they haven't returned our calls and the last time they didn't have the thing indicted or the talk to the witness, whatever it is. They, they and through this year, I have, in any, and I've worked in all these places, I've not seen one prosecutor do more than they were doing before they had the 
four or three days at the office. I mean, that's why I don't think it's it, for that end of it that it's working. Well, and uh, yeah, that certainly, Jackie's right. I mean, the concept when we adopted this plan was in addition to encouraging out of court communication, it was docket is, is a waste of time. And so the idea was if you have one many huge day, it's all hands on deck, that gives you four other days. The prosecutors assigned on the 179 don't use it. And, you know, that. They're not my employees. And, they, and they're and, right. And so I think, I, I think that's a good point, and I should start encouraging them to use it to make good on the things that were the impetus for the program. Um, I, I, I will also take that to heart when we're in trial. I will tell them to get up further than they are. Keisha. Um, and to that end, with the prosecutors not being prepared, sometimes you're having to reset cases for, to get things done. Right. And what I've experienced is that you only can reset the case on that particular day. And sometimes your day is filled up. And I've had some resistance from coordinators about putting cases on other days besides a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday. So I'm going to court with six cases knowing I'm not going to get paid on everything that day right. just because I'm trying to appease everyone and I'm trying to get things done. But and as the only one of the five of us who has done defense work and has been appointed attorney, this was what I said at the very beginning. I, told, I still think that that's, and you'll find that on my non-DCM days, I have a larger docket than the other DCM courts on their non-DCM days. I don't want you to work for free ever. And what I, and I don't know, I'm not going to speak to how the other courts handle, I can tell you that it would not surprise me if some of the other judges weren't aware that you were going to be put, putting yourself in a position where you were working for free. And what I would suggest is to approach and say, Judge, you know, I, I understand, especially with those courts where the cases fall off and then you're called and you're given like two weeks. Right. I, I really want to help you out on the DCM days, but I, I don't want to work for free. And, and the judge may just say, well, you have to talk to my coordinator about that. The coordinator says, but that's our day, so I have to set everything, and you don't want that that coordinator to be in trouble. So that's another reason that that's the defense bar doesn't like this day, because okay. we get the short end of the stick on this one day, one day, one day deal. I understand. And that's not in your court, I nope. must say. But that is true in a lot of the others. Uh, and, and, and I will, I thought that they had been a little bit more receptive to yeah. setting the one day. I will talk to them about it. Clay's here from our admin office. He came to listen mainly to y'all's feedback so that we can. Um, and, and I appreciate that because, uh, again, I, yeah. I don't want anybody working for this. <laughs> we have enough. Let me get Trey first, Ellie. Quick comment. If getting the names of the prosecutor is super easy by calling 5800, but I personally like to add the interns because they work a lot. And so could you <laughs> add interns? Oh, they're efficient. If you could add the interns' addresses up there, the um, Esther and all them don't normally have it. Okay. Help that time. That's a, that's an excellent idea. And Roughly a third at each. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
judge the other part of that's the punishment. I mean, is there something more we can do mm -hmm. to try to break that up? I know some would love to leave this setting. I always like the earlier setting, but I get out of here. But I mean, is there a way to. The number one thing that would help, and I think it would help across the board, mm -hmm. one of you doing it isn't going to matter, just like one VA getting their stuff done. It doesn't matter in the global. But if everyone, especially in the courts where you're allowed to pick your time, would show up, plus or minus, by 10, 15 minutes at that time slot that you've chosen, um, that would be very helpful. Because at the end of the day, you're right, they are segmented so that we have roughly the same amount um, on each document. But if, you're, if, if you've chosen a 9 o'clock and we set up all of our things at 9, it never seems to amaze me how many attorneys walked in on their cases that were set for fees at 11.45 or 12. So, um, what else? Okay. Yes, yes, Jack. That goes back to the same thing. We're set at 9 o'clock. But at 9 o'clock we get there and the prosecutors come in at 9 o'clock. So that 9 o'clock docket drags on and that's what, what he's talking about. We can't get through because even if we're there and they always say, well, it's the defense lawyers, the prosecutors aren't there so the defense lawyers stop coming on time because they know there's not going to be a prosecutor there. Right, the it's cyclical. Yeah. I, I would also encourage you, and I know this sounds... I don't want to say this in it would help the entire process, and I think that you would find that you, as a defense attorney, would get out sooner if you would help the prosecutors with their plea paperwork. If a prosecutor has four packets of plea paperwork to do before he gets to yours, you're going to be waiting for a while. And I've never, that's not true. Um, I was going to say, I've never had a prosecutor crumble when I did my own plea paperwork. Some of them do. <laughs> it's not their paperwork. Those are the court's admonishments. So you feel like in my court, you can work, do your own work. Uh, and that's one of the simple practitionerships that I think may make a slight difference. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about some brief areas, and then I would like to ask, ask questions if you have questions. Um, so I've talked to you about the emails. I will get, um, let's see if I can, do, do the interns have, do you think, have like, intern, is it intern four or what? It's like intern four, three, mm -hmm. but they always change, and nobody at the DA's office can be called them knows the name of them. Okay. I will work so on that. Let's find out which intern number it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be easy if it was like intern 179? Yeah, they do have something. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, they do have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, the AP equipment. One of the things that's really frustrating from my vantage point now is to watch, and I get the strategy that sometimes it's cute and maybe persuasive with the jury for you to fumble around with the AP equipment, and that may be endearing, but sometimes. It's not at all endearing and it's frustrating. So if I, um, and that AV equipment, I know that it's relatively new. It works a lot better than the old stuff. The TV quality to have it in a trial is significantly better. It's not perfect. Um, but I'm going to set a personal invitation. If you have a trial coming up, whether it's in the 179th or another court, as long as we're not in court, you are more than welcome to come to the 18th floor and tinker on my AV equipment. All right? Uh, just to make yourself familiar with it. I mean, it's not the prosecutor's courtroom any more than it's mine, quite frankly. So. Looks like you own it, just like they do. And they do because they get to, because they're far more familiar with any one sort than you are. So, yes, sir. Um, how many of you, and I know he has contract attorneys, so probably not many unless you're doing retained work. How many of you have been in Mixed Fathers Court with his click, click, click? Okay, so I leaned with the chief. I think that's awesome. Um, the problem with that is the DAs have limited availability about where they can set computers up. I know they have traveling laptops now, but there's some disagreement about how effective those are. Um, I would be a fan of that, but in the end, if it, we need a printer, um, and somebody's got to, I mean, the programming already exists. I think Mike Trent did a, an enormous amount of work on that, and it was the chief in that spot in support. So, um, at the end of the day, though, if you have one person you can fill out paperwork on, they can type it faster. Um, I think you're still going to be in the same position. Yes, sir. Yeah. There are other counties uh, that already have that all electronic. Oh, no. We are so far behind the two. You can fill out everything as a defense attorney. You can send it to the prosecutor on the tablet you get in the courtroom. The prosecutor has their own tablet in the courtroom that belongs to that courtroom. They process everything they need, goes to the judge. The judge has their own separate tablet, puts it up on the screen. Done. It's extremely effective. 
So there are ways to get that sounds awesome. Amazing. It's uh, amazing. It really is. Right, Karen kind of had a pretty, when we went to visit and observe Doc in Tarrant County, Tarrant kind of had a pretty um, computer-integrated format for all of the discovery and all of those things. You know, and just at the end of the day, that requires money. Um, and so uh, I would be a big fan if somebody wanted to give commissioners for a ton of money to give uh, our building, but I just don't think that's likely. Um, okay, so the other thing is, you may know about, uh, it's not on there, um, on the justtex.net site, you go to courts, and you go to criminal, when you get the, the screen that has everybody listed, the bottom, it says, it has a link for the charge bank, and you may not know the charge bank is the same charge bank where I get my charges from. Um, I, I personally always thought as a practitioner, as a, as a lawyer, whether it was prosecution or defense, if you start from the end and work backwards, you'll have a better understanding of your case. If you know what the jury's going to be instructed in terms of uh, the application paragraphs and the law, it may help it clear things up for you. So I just, it's not very user-friendly. Uh, we're working on that. But, um, but it is a good place to start, so if you didn't know about it, it has everything that all the laws, all the um, offenses, alphabetized, and defensive charges, and those. So that's helpful. Um, from my perspective, when I got to talk to you guys last year, and it was um, as the perspective as a new judge, and so I kind of just had some tips. Um, one of the things that I see now is defense attorneys who are doing their jobs but apologizing. That may not be anybody in this room, but don't apologize for doing your job. Don't apologize for asking for bond reduction. Don't apologize for, I'm not maybe be speaking for myself only. There's no need for you to apologize for doing your job. So, um, bonds. Jelanda had asked about bonds. Clearly, I'm a judge next I don't think, yeah, it's a good schedule. I think most of the judges um, try to adhere to bond schedule, for better or worse across the board. That being said, for me, personally, it is a starting point that at a minimum provides some consistency. Um, I deviate from the bond schedule almost always to the defendant's benefit. I very rarely go above what the bond schedule prescribes. Um, so I know, Jelani, you talked about bonds, and I, I, and I think that you had something that you wanted to say that I can my well, on. Well, uh, as I said before, I, I,
The lines are shorter, and I will say that facilities access is done at a, a, what I'm told is a really good job. They have people that monitor those lines and the time. The facilities access people actually go and they stand in line with their stopwatch and they say time how long it takes them to end the, uh, and the so times have been cut down significantly. So we are all trying to address the issues. Now, uh, I think it's also good for the jail clients because you have the evidence gathering part. And that may be a, a reflection of, in all the courts, DCM courts, that at some point you're going to have to interact with the judge. Um, and that's certainly not so that you feel like we're strong-arming you to do anything. It's to make sure that everybody's on the same page with what I always ask the attorneys in my court. Does whatever exists in the universe for you to get, is it in the DA's file? Are we waiting on things? Because that ultimately may make the difference between a three-week reset and a six-week reset. So, John. Generally, 
But what you can do is start buying the inroads three weeks beforehand via email and, hey, if you look at the search issue, here's my case law. Um, you know, do you have a, something lower? All right, so 10, we're not quite there yet. You, negotiations are, they take a while, right? And so that's, I think, the beauty of the longer settings. What's the bad part of the system? For every good, there's a bad one. What's the bad part? Um, I mean, you guys are unhappy, some of you. Um, Keisha had a great point that sometimes the appointed attorneys feel like they're really kind of shoehorned into working for free, which is not acceptable and never should be. Um, I think, really, I only speak for myself. Um, and I, I don't really have any statistical proof of this. And whether or not it's because I have one big docket day, so I'm really paying attention on Thursday, uh, I see that what happens on Thursday, in contrast to any other day nine months ago, mm. is that the deals seem to be, the deals the defendants are pleading to seem to be far, far better before. And I really think that, again, just hypothetically, I mean, just hypothesizing, <laughs> That it is sort of that, wow, we have so much. Let's really try to pull the bat. And so I think that they're doing a better job of staff. I wish they would start doing that at intake in one edition. But <laughs> okay, Just real quick, because it's kind of, we talk about plea papers and helping the prosecutors fill out the plea papers. I think also, if you go back to your brethren and tell some of them to look at the plea papers, because some of those can be streamlined tremendously. Oh, yeah. And look so like they were so copied on a mimeograph. Yeah. <laughs> and, only, okay? and, and, and very redundant. So if they were streamlined, that would make things go faster. Um, and I know that that is, just so you know, uh, one of the things.